I'm here in Wales, and when you're in Wales, there's a castle basically every, well, every square meter. And I felt like I probably needed to go take pictures of at least one castle while I was here. Um, but it's been raining all morning, and the forecast is for rain all day, so I thought I'd maybe keep things simple and just photograph the castle here near my guest house in Pembroke, which is kind of right around the corner. The castle's right there. I was hoping to get kind of a shot with like maybe a reflection and the lit up castle and at least a really nice blue sky in the background, but the sky's kind of actually really, really gray. So uh, I'm gonna grab a photo anyway and got up. Might as well take the shot. So let's get set up. Normally I'm super positive when I wake up and I'm like, oh, you know what, it'll probably clear. <laughs> this isn't gonna clear, this is just getting worse and worse. I'm getting wet, getting kind of, it's not really like heavy rain, it's just mist rain. So there's mist hitting the front of the lens when I'm trying to take pictures and yeah, there's no worse light for photography than right now, I don't think. So um, I'm gonna pack up, head back to the guest house, and then we'll head out this evening, afternoon, and shoot more seascapes, because I had better luck doing that here in Wales yesterday and the day before. The weather's just getting nastier and nastier. Wow, I should have stayed in bed. So I made it to Strumble Head and this location's actually perfect, absolutely perfect. The weather though is not perfect, it's absolutely the worst, absolutely unperfect, imperfect. But that being said, I think I'm gonna wait it out and maybe shoot this in blue hour because it is beautiful here and the perfect photo for a stylish shot that I need. Now I don't have a lot of content today because the because it's been raining. So I'm gonna jump forward to the future where I'm gonna film a quick Q&A and then come back here and shoot this. I'm here in the future. I'm actually in the Philippines already. I'm that far in the future, which means that the videos are kind of delayed. Generally, I like the videos to be maybe two or three days delayed. Right now, they're like 10. And anyways, I also want to talk about something um, relating tr to Trover. Yesterday's video was about the Trover scavenger hunt, location scouting using Trover in Wales, which I think was one of my favorite videos ever. It was so much fun. And uh, every month, in case you didn't know this, I do photo contests that I run on Trover through my Facebook page, which is called Brendan Vanson's Mother Photographers, and you can search it on Facebook to find it if you don't know about it. But the way those contests are supposed to run is they're supposed to run like three contests the first three weeks of a month and then one the last week and then we give away things like Amazon gift cards, tripods, filter systems, all sorts of really cool stuff but because of the internet being so bad here in the Philippines and because I'm so far behind, things are far behind. So the Trover photo contests are still happening on the Facebook page. They're just not on schedule. And I'm sorry they're delayed, but the bad internet, I just, uh, I just couldn't get them online on time. But let's get into the Q&A questions. I asked for personal questions, and it's kind of funny because even if I ask for personal questions on this, I always get a ton of like, hey, what camera do you use? But we're gonna keep it personal. I'm just gonna literally scroll through. There was like 80 questions, but I'm gonna pick like five. How long can you keep up this lifestyle? Question from Chris Marr, who's also an awesome photographer at Small Town Hero. Probably forever. <laughs> how long can I keep it up and how long will I keep it up is another question. I like my lifestyle. I like constantly traveling. I like not having a base. I like eating at different restaurants and having somebody that cleans my room for me because I'm basically a spoiled brat now that I travel the world. And I don't see that changing in a really big capacity, but what I do see changing is me finding more of a base to base myself for smaller or for longer periods of time 
Right now it's kind of like run, 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 run. I'd like to be like in a base where I can drop all my things and then run and then come back and then run and then come back and do that on like three month spaces if that makes sense. So look for that to happen this year. I could live this lifestyle forever. I just kind of maybe need to adapt it a little bit. What age did you start going bald and how many hats do you own to cover it up? There's my bald head. I have no problem with having a bald head. Just so you guys know, I started going bald or noticing that I was going bald when I was 16 and it's just slowly gone since I was, yeah, since I was 16. And I've honestly, I maybe was like self-conscious about it when I was like 16, 17, 18, maybe up until the end of university. And now I could care less than I'm bald. I have no problem. The reason I wear a hat and I wore a hat originally on my blog is I kind of wanted to have something distinguishing about me that would make me recognizable to viewers because I feel like I kind of have an average looking face. I'm not super attractive, I'm kind of normal looking, and I kind of wanted a distinguishing feature, and I always rocked backwards snapback hats early on, and actually it was last year in the Philippines that I brought them back. And how many caps do I own? I think close to 10. <laughs> what do I do for medical insurance? I actually have travel insurance that I get through World Nomads, and I buy an entire year in bulk. World Nomads is actually really fantastic. They cover a little bit of camera gear, not a great amount but they definitely cover the health side of things which is the most important and the beauty of world nomads is you can actually re-up them when you're traveling so if I'm like six months into travel and I just want to keep going and like I'm a year and a half into travel I can re-up a lot of insurances I have to go home before I start a new trip and it doesn't work for my lifestyle that's not a sponsored pitch by the way I legit use them and I'm not being paid to say that favorite soccer player of all time football player of all time Ian Robin I absolutely love Ian Robin Robin. I felt like he was just like the heart of that Dutch team that made the run in the World Cup a while back. And even though I'm Canadian, I grew up kind of feeling Dutch and being a little bit Dutch in my hometown and rooting for the Netherlands football team. And uh, so yeah, I'm Robin. Do you think your vlogging has changed or been affected since pairing up with Jody? Yes, I think it has. I think that um, it's become a little bit more multi-dimensional. I think when you're vlogging on your own, it can become a little bit self-centered, and it's just because it's nice having subjects in your photos and your videos. I also think having somebody around me, I kind of build on their energy, and Jody, maybe on camera doesn't show that she's full of energy, but in real life, she's just full of it. So I kind of feed off her energy a lot, and I think that it probably shows in the videos. So I think that my vlogging definitely changes when Jody's around. It maybe has more of her in it because I like featuring another person having that scale in the videos But it's also changed my photography because I now get the chance to shoot more portraits Nobody wants to see a portrait of me So it's nice having somebody that I can shoot portraits of or shoot more environmental environmental portraits out in the road and I can shoot you know just have somebody out standing in the distance that looks better than I do in a red dress <laughs> What's my shoe size? 10 because I'm average. What do I think of Bitcoin? Um, I'm mad about Bitcoin. <laughs> because about a year ago, one of my buddies said, oh, you should jump on this Bitcoin thing. It's really cool. And I had some money. I probably had $1,000 or maybe a little bit more that I could have invested that I wanted to invest. And I went onto a website to do the Bitcoin thing. And I couldn't figure it out because I'm not very tech guy. I'm not very tech savvy. And I was like, I don't really understand it. And I don't want to invest in something I don't understand. And I, I just don't understand what Bitcoin is or how you make it. And then obviously now in that year, that $1,000 or $1,500, I think would have jumped to like 20 grand or something stupid. So I hate Bitcoin. If a genie said they give you three houses anywhere in the world, where would you want them to be? I think that's an easier question than you'd expect because one would be in Cape Town. I love Cape Town and I'd love to have a base somewhere in Southern Africa. The second I think would be in Portugal because I love Portugal, absolutely love Portugal. Portugal and I would love to have a base somewhere in Europe. I don't need a base in North America because my brother's got a cool apartment in Calgary in Canada. My parents have a house in Arizona and so maybe my third house would be the big challenge and I'd be torn between somewhere like maybe Brazil or somewhere like Colombia or somewhere in Asia. I don't know where in Asia but somewhere 
Maybe a beach house somewhere in Asia would be cool. Last question, my boy Michael Perea asks, how much coffee did you drink on the BVS America road trip? You guys are gonna be surprised, but I didn't drink much. I made a rule on that road trip that I was gonna only have one energy drink and one coffee a day because I was worried that I was gonna just pound all this caffeine and then I would like pass out or like crash or I'd be driving and then I would crash and then crash and I didn't want that obviously. So I had um, one energy drink in usually around midday and then a coffee in the evening and that was usually how it worked the first day I didn't have any coffee Chicago uh, my buddy John brought me a coffee then I had a coffee crossing Colorado in the blizzard and then actually Michael you bought me a coffee in uh, in Moab so I guess that's four coffees I think I had only four coffees the whole way across America and normal sized coffees they weren't like yeah. Anyways, that's it. Let's get back to the past. Back to Wales. And just like that, I'm back already. So um, I'm here at this spot. You might remember that a while ago, I was shooting a bunch of images for a client, Eddie Bauer, a client I love, an outdoor brand. And it's actually one of my favorite clients to shoot for. And they actually recommissioned me for a new set of images, for seven new images. And I really, really want a shot here. Kind of a hiking shot. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get my gear, and I'm gonna set up a hiking shot somewhere along this coast, maybe sat there with the lighthouse in the background and some Eddie Bauer gear on. I think it'll be really cool, so let's go get the gear. So the shots actually came out kind of cool. This bluish light that I'm getting right now actually kind of works. It's moody and yeah, it's kind of beautiful. I think I already got the shot I wanted for the client. I'm gonna talk to you not about what I did or the settings, but how I did it. So that was a long exposure selfie. The art of the longer exposure selfie is kind of what I'm known for. And the way I do it is really simple. I just stand still. There's no layer blending. There's no layer masking. I just stand still. And one of the tricks of doing that is using a camera into volometer. So I have my cameras into volometer set up. I was taking 15 second exposures or eight second exposures. And then I'll set it up to take like 10 or 15 photos. And that way I can stand still for a really long time. And hopefully one of them I didn't move. Doing that, I can also get farther away from the camera. So I don't have to like worry about beating the 10 second timer or anything like that. I can also stand in multiple places in case one works better than another. So I might only show one photo, but the chances are the camera took like three or four. The other thing I want to talk about is safety <laughs> or at least safety for your camera when you're on a cliff edge if you're on a cliff edge or on a hill slope like this you might be a little bit worried that your camera gear is gonna get knocked over by wind and end up in the sea or something like that and there's a pretty simple solution to it and it actually seems kind of counterintuitive the way my camera is set up shows that I'm not right on the cliff anymore but I kind of want to walk you through what I'm doing the tripod's actually set up with two feet pointing down the hill, which is the counterintuitive part because if you set it up on level, it feels like if it falls, it's gonna fall right down the cliff. But what you do is you set those two feet up down the hill, one foot backwards, and then you set this one foot way lower at the back. That way you're actually way off level and the camera's leaning back. And if a gust of wind happens or you knock your camera, it's not gonna fall forward. It's gonna take a serious amount of weight to knock it forward. What's likely gonna happen is if it falls, it's gonna bounce like that and fall sideways or backwards into the cliff edge and save your camera gear. So set up your tripod like that if you're shooting on cliffs. And now, <laughs> and now the rain is just like crushing down and I'm loving the light even though it's crushing down and it's splattering the filters in the front of the lens. So I'm actually gonna go to the other side of the lighthouse and cut, try a couple more photos before calling this a show. Okay, check that, not happening over here. It's way windier and the rain's starting to hit me pretty hard. So I'm actually gonna call this an episode. I want to come back here to this location, to this region, to Wales, and to shoot again, to shoot more. This has just been so incredible, even with the nasty weather. And to be honest, this weather's probably not even close to as nasty as it gets here sometimes. Um, 
But yeah, that's it for me today. Hope you liked the Q&A and the photography, even if the weather was bad. And I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.